Hello, welcome to Starlight Talks. I'm here this week with Andrew Davis um, from Floor Time. So if you have any questions about that, please ask away. Love interaction from you guys. Please check out artism.com and all the wonderful things we have available on there. Um, tomorrow we have a uh, support group and on Friday we have game night to so sign up for that those fun things um i have the blog on there where i write about living on the spectrum we have um a free free consultations for mentorship support group parent coaching all on there um so please try out anything that you're interested in i was on the mighty today and we had um a meditation program today so if you did either of those things um Thank you so much. And both um, The Mighty is available to watch if you missed it live. You can still view it. And we there's another chance to do Melody Meditation next week. So um, go check out the website. Click on calendar for all of our events that are coming up and sign up for a newsletter or follow us on social media for all of our upcoming things. Um, be notified about that i do these live streams every wednesday at 7 pacific standard time where i talk about anything and everything related to autism hopefully have some great guests uh, next week um i'm gonna have danny Wadey from asperger experts on so <laughs> this week is andrea davis from floor time if you'd like to introduce yourself wow i'd love to hi everybody this is so fun to be here with chloe and uh, with you guys, and I am a clinical psychologist, and I have a practice in Pasadena, California, called Greenhouse Therapy Center. And it's a general full service mental health center where we work with adults, kids, all ages, all kinds of problems. And we have a special program of floor time, which is we'll talk a lot about today, but uh, where we're using Dr. Stanley Greenspan and Dr. Serena Weeder's approach to working with people who have neurodevelopmental differences and helping them achieve their goals, their social goals, their emotional growth goals. Uh, and we work intensively with people uh, to, to get them where they need to be, where they wanna be, but using a very, very precious approach uh, that's called floor time. And to, today maybe we can do some myth busting on what that means because it, it means way, way more than getting on the floor. Um, it's a whole approach to people and to how relationships are the key to helping every single one of us uh, to, to grow and to develop, but, but especially attuned relationships are what make the biggest difference. And that's true from the moment a baby comes out into the world, that the attunement with what they need and who they are is what helps them figure themselves out and then grow in the relationship and grow in their independence as well. So yeah, uh, hopefully that makes sense of who I am, what I'm about. I'm also the president of our, our nonprofit, which is our DIR Floor Time Coalition of California. And I'll talk a lot about that too, because you get me going and I, I wanna talk about our advocacy, outreach, education efforts as well today with you. So yeah um we can we can talk about any and all of that so everybody write your questions and let us know what you want to know but chloe what what's first on your mind or what do you think it are, might be on people's minds first of all um well for um for me a big topic is um i am diagnosed what now Mm -hmm. I get those questions a lot from people who like are first diagnosed and like they don't even know what autism is and they don't know, you know, and it's from all ages, you know, where do I start? Like, where? Like, like, where do I start looking for services? What services are right for me? You know, all those kind of things. Yeah. So where, and that's what autism is so exciting to be there mm -hmm. as a live mentorship program and, we're, we're there to help you. I love what you're doing with your whole community that you're growing on, online and around the world of actual help. Um, the fir first getting 
diagnosed can be a, a, a relief for some people. It can be um, a crisis for others. It's like, what does this mean now? It, it explains a lot, but then what does it mean for my next steps or what does it mean for my future? And it's a process of coming to terms with what does the word autism really mean to us and our family? We work with a lot of parents who are going through that process of adjusting. What, is, what, what can I expect? What can't I expect? How do I help? So um, we, we would uh, definitely, definitely at that point recommend that you get a team behind you that can help you with all the different aspects of um, what, what kind of services are are going to be needed? What kind of extra supports are going to be needed? How am I, who's going to help me with my feelings about this, whether I'm, I'm the, the patient or whether I'm the parent, family caregiver member? Um, there's just going to be a lot of feelings. So having different people who are on your side and on your team and who really get you and um, can help you figure out what is just right for you for you nobody's the same nobody's the same person so there's no cookie cutter approach and that's a lot what we've learned through the floor time approach is um, being intensely curious about somebody about w getting way beyond a diagnostic label into what's your passion what makes you tick how does your body work how does your body maybe not work for you and what how do we get around that for you so that you can have the, the things you want and need in your life? So I'd say the first thing is getting a, a good team, a psychologist, maybe a speech expert or um, somebody who's an expert in development um, in your area. And you can look for those people. We have websites to find providers like, as through um, the uh, ICDL or Interdisciplinary Council on Development and Learning has a directory so that is international to look for people who've been trained in these developmental ways of thinking about you who you are what you need and they call it the, because our theory is called DIR they call it the DIR directory or directory.com and that's uh, that's our way to find people who've been trained in a developmental approach and I wanted to talk about that with you a little bit today if people don't even know what I mean by a developmental approach. Uh, um, so yeah. Developmental versus relationship based. Uh. Well, development, a developmental or a relationship based approach, those are, those are kind of the same. And what they are versus is behavioral approaches, which most people hear about no matter where you are in the world. You'll, you'll often hear the myth, ABA is the only way. And that's coming from a behaviorist perspective. And as you've shared with me, that doesn't work for everybody. Um, so to hear that, um, people have to listen more beyond that when they hear ABA or applied behavior analysis is the only way to, uh, to get you support and services. A developmental approach is, yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's a, a relate, I probably said it wrong in my uh, text to you earlier. Uh, a developmental approach uh, says we're here to support you, your uniqueness, and to, as I said at the very beginning, use relationship to get you there. Use the connection to help you get to where you want to go versus see it, counting your problem behaviors and trying to put you on a graph and um, start to think of you as a, a bunch of behaviors that you either got to learn or you got to get rid of, which really reduces who you are and makes people think of you in a, a very limited way. So, um, yeah, we already got a comment, which is exciting. I'm not always used to these live events. Uh, so um, the approach is, is a beautiful one. It helps us think about all people in a trajectory across the lifespan of um, learning more and more rich ways to engage with uh, the world, engage with the social network around us, um, and to face our stresses and challenges 
with the support that we need in the kinds of attuned relationships. What does attunement mean? Does that make sense when I mention the word? It's kind of our inside lingo, so maybe I need to break it down a little bit. Yeah, like I catch myself doing that. There's so much, like autism is almost a culture and a language in itself. And I catch myself getting caught up in, because there's so many words that are so helpful um, in our world that aren't known to, you know, people who are new to the world or people who are not really part of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Myself saying things and people are like, wait, that's like, I didn't get any of that. because <laughs> I don't know any of those words. I know. Um, I don't know if you want to th throw up the pyramid, which is kind of the core yeah. of how I see the developmental approach, uh, which is really looking at how do we get to the places we want to go through the attunement of the people around us. So um, attunement really meaning the way that people read you and read your needs and adapt themselves to connect with you in a deep and, and satisfying way. So um, as I mentioned, it's almost easiest to think of development from the very beginning. Like we know that when we hold a, a baby, we have to adapt ourselves. We have to attune to what they're needing in the moment in order to have a rich interaction. And that's actually true for someone who's not a baby. If somebody who's, who's 27, we have to read them and adapt ourselves in order to support a rich connection, to have something that's truly um, a back and forth interaction that we're both contributing to, or both learning from each other and having a meaningful so back and forth. Up for everybody? Let's see, I don't see it, but I meant not see it on my side. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, there we go. There it is. If we can zoom in a little bit so the people can, there's a lot of words there, but maybe. and the uh, social cues around them. Only then can we start to think about, okay, now we can help people to get connected socially, to be aware and to read the cues and to learn to, to look for them and to send cues to others that signal so we can be, have a, a mutually co-constructed experience together or we're reading off of each other which is something we're, we're not doing here online very much because I we can't we can't all be in the same room and see each other. We, we, uh, 
we don't have much of that queuing going on. We just have to imagine it at least and, and read your comments. The third rung up the that developmental ladder, which we're always training ourselves to think of when we use a floor time method is, okay, then what comes next? And that's that beautiful capacity three for reciprocity. Well, so I just yes. got some comments that when I cut our, um, to the triangle that they couldn't hear anything we said. So. <laughs> Oh, well, my God. that's interesting. I'm glad. I hope we're back and they can hear us talk. So let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Um, Thanks for the comments, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> that was exactly what we were talking about, is, is reading oh, cues and, and adjusting ourselves. And so yeah. we, we had no cues, and so we were not adjusting ourselves. Oh, so we yeah. were not. Sorry about that. No, that's, it makes my point, is that mm -hmm. we have to. <laughs> we have to be connected in order to get up to the next capacity. So I talked about thinking in a floor time way is thinking first and then and then in our every every moment, every situation that when I'm I'm here to help you and you're here to help me first, first of all, get regulated, which is that perfect balance of aroused, alert, and awake enough, attentive enough, but not over the top to too excited or too anxious, but just right where we're calm and alert. And and that is a, a, a challenge in certain situations. So we, we really work a lot on um, helping family members and caregivers to think about that first, or, or providers, medical providers, or service providers are thinking about first, how can I help you make sure that your regulation state is ready, ready for the next steps of a moment together? And then we think about engagement. Hopefully they can hear us now because we, we didn't cut away. We're, we're back, hopefully. Then we can think about starting to cue off of each other, read each other's cues and be together and be aware of each other. That would be capacity two on that ladder. And then we think about, okay, then when that's going well, can we think about more reciprocity, more mutuality, more purposeful sharing of information together? So we're really breaking down what does it mean to be in social engagement with people? What does it take? And then it, we just go on up the ladder from there to really much more interesting things like complex communication where we negotiate. We negotiate how to have fun together, how to have a conversation that's meaningful for both of us. Um, and how do we use imagination and capacity five? And how do we begin to think about the world in bigger, bigger and bigger ways? Logic, emotional thinking, complex thinking, uh, and going up to the peak, which is self-reflection, reflective thinking, be able to really um, take into account who we are and how that impacts our moments. So these are processes for parents to learn, for therapists to learn, and for the, uh, everybody to learn, to think in this, in this sequential order. And that's what development really is and what a developmental approach is. It's not a, just a, a bunch of behaviors, good or bad. It's capacities that we all are growing into. Yeah, so I'll post this on the autism page so you guys can see this whole pyramid okay and what it comes from is this this book which is um, available on our greenhouse therapy center website or amazon which is uh the floor time strategies book where we uh tried to take dr stanley greenspan and dr serena weeder's brilliant approach and make it more like uh, a sequential step-by-step, -step, well, what do I do now? What, if I'm trying to help somebody grow in that way that I just spoke about, what do I do? And so we've broken it down. If you're working on this capacity, well, what, what, um, what, what, simple, what simple, rememberable, memorable um, strategies could I try? Like for example, this core strategy of sharing pleasure and having that be a main way that I think about helping somebody else to grow is how can we have joint attention and shared pleasure, really connect around the things that we're passionate about in, 
that's a, just a very different way of working with people. Um, but we broke it down. So each each stage has the, the things to think about and how to do it and examples. So that book is available. Um, and we found it to be extremely helpful for parents who just want it to think about kind of learning one new approach at a time or for providers who are new to the field and they want to be thinking about how do, how do I take a floor time approach? How do I help somebody? So that is a, that's our resource that we find has been really transformative for a lot of people who are kind of new to the whole concept and breaking it down step by step. I also wanted to be sure to talk about the other side of things, which is, as I said, our advocacy, and that's our legislative advocacy side through the DIR Floor Time Coalition of California. We've been working together on that, as Chloe knows, for 11 years, uh, where we're trying to work to change laws, change, get the word out. Because of that myth that has been spoken so many times, it's almost become a, a given for many, many people. When uh, they think about options for getting support and getting intervention, getting treatment, getting the therapy, um, unfortunately, many, many states have laws which say there's only one approach that's going to be covered, and that would be ABA. And so we're trying to bust that myth on a big, big level, let lawmakers know, policymakers know that there's other research evidence-based approaches, and one of them is a developmental approach. And uh, so that if, if uh, somebody goes for support and they find, hey, ABA doesn't work for me, it reduces me, or it, it makes me more anxious, or makes me have more meltdowns, it's like you've shared your experience, that um, we can have our doctors prescribe something that's right for us that our, maybe our family see would be better for us and then maybe a developmental approach and it shouldn't be up to lawmakers or insurance companies to say, oh no, that's not covered, which is where we're at in many, many states. So we're having a huge fundraiser. It's gonna be a live event like this but, um, August 2nd. And if you wanna throw that, um, that graphic up and but not lose us somehow, <laughs> so how to do that, um, we want, everybody to come out and have a good time together in a, a kind of a massive Zoom format where we'll have celebrity interviews, we'll have Chloe Estelle with us, hopefully we'll have lots and lots of people to come in and do fun uh, art lessons, cooking demos, but also interviews about people telling my story and how they can just summarize what it means to have an, a, a therapeutic approach that celebrates who they are, who appreciates who they are, and um, doesn't reduce them to a bunch of behaviors. So um, we are looking forward to having fun together that day. We wanna dance together. We wanna hear from people about their passions. We're gonna play, um, we're soliciting right now videos to feature of people just sharing what, what their passion in the world is, whether it's their, their topic of study or, there we go, whether it's their interests, um, whether it's their, their grandma or their cat, their, their culture, it doesn't matter. We just wanna hear from people telling their story and maybe how DIR floor time has helped them really figure out what their passions are and how to get their goals met. So that day, if you all can see that, we want you to join us. It's 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time and all the in-between times across. We want to we want to have a really good time with you and have some auctions and some um, just silly silly time together. Just a real combination of serious and silly together. So it'll be family friendly. Um, kids can can join in and uh, choose what they want to do, what they want to learn, or what they want to share. So that's that's the plan. Of course, we normally for something like this. We planned something to be together, uh, whether it was in Griffith Park when we had floor time family fun days, came out at Shane's Inspiration, or when we had um, evening galas, but this is going to be different. I mean, we have to adapt to the changing world and um, a world of uh, protecting each other from, you know, 
contagion, <coughs> contagion. So we're going to try it in the, the big, huge Zoom format. And, and that allows us, though, to hear from more people around the world, actually, who are really behind this effort. Yeah, I'm really excited um, about that. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe you can get a lot of your friends to join us. Yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah, so we'll be sharing all that. that yeah. On our pages, so you guys have all that information. Definitely. Um, Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been an uphill battle um, in some ways, trying to uh, get through to lawmakers and they they get it. They get it that there shouldn't be just one approach to treating yeah. people who have such a massive variety of abilities or needs. Um, but there has been so much lobbying on the other side that there should, you know, really only one approach that's evidence-based, which is not true anymore. It's not, not true at all. And um, mm. that, um, that it's just sort of a, a getting getting through to insurance companies because they we all know that they they are businesses and they only pay for something if they have to and if they can say no that that's in their business interest to say no so they have to go higher than that and make make new laws that that really embrace the diversity of needs and approaches and um, things that work to really help. Another myth I should probably bust is that a lot of people have heard about floor time, maybe because of the name, um, as it applies to younger kids. And they may be really shocked that it is an approach that works across the lifespan, that we have a number of uh, young adults in our programs who are still being helped by the same approach and philosophy that Dr. Greenspan really started on with, with younger children, but it applies to us no matter what our age. And so floor time is really for all ages and can make a big difference. The people who are making big steps of transition, maybe it's um, to living on your own, or maybe it's to heading out to a kind of a, a, a job training program or a, a university setting, um, big, big life transition changes, it can help as well to have somebody who really knows how to read your body's individual differences, <laughs> the way your brain works, and then help you work around that to, as I said earlier, reach the goals that you have for yourself. So yeah, it's just like I feel like there's this myth in general that autism goes away when you become an adult, and it's just not true. I mean, people aren't diagnosed till they're adults because they can, you know, figure things out that long, and then these big things hit them, and they're like, I don't. And then they start seeing there's a difference in a struggle, and they get diagnosed in like their 40s, you know. So it's you know, we become adults and autism doesn't go away. I mean, we learn ways of dealing with life, but it like we're still autistic and so services are still needed. And a lot of services, you know, I would love our services to be for, for all ages eventually. Right now we okay. don't have that capability. Yeah. So we started focusing on adults just because there's nothing out there for adults, you know um and so like having stuff specifically for adults um was helpful because even like the stuff that does exist how do you find it um how do you find it right <laughs> yeah. exactly it's not that easy and um you said what do i do now that i'm diagnosed i think uh going ahead with that question that I didn't really answer at the very beginning, but I'm kind of coming back around to it right now, is mm -hmm. one of the powers, I think, of the DIR floor time approach is that it does talk about development in higher levels. We're not just talking about little kids and sort of those higher levels of thinking that help us face the emotional challenges of those major life transitions. 
I might start with the book Engaging Autism as just a great beginning point um, for understanding what is what does it mean to have a, a individual differences developmental framework for thinking about autism? And uh, that was a later life, later career publication by Stanley Greenspan that gets us uh, up into those higher levels of de development. So that's a really good one to start with, Engaging Autism by Stanley Greenspan and Serena Weider. Um, and then going to the ICDL directory to find people who can be part of your team and your answer your questions and adapt services that you you might need. And then getting involved in groups like Autism, where I mean, you guys are doing amazing things. Friday night game night sounds fun. I want to join. <laughs> I haven't tried it, but it sounds really really fun. I mean, what's what's more fun than playing games with a bunch of nice people? Yeah, that's. that's Really cool. Yeah, and um, I mean, we have people really engaged in the game. We have people that just like, you know, when we were doing it in person, they were just like, it was their day of the week to get out of the house. And they're like, oh, you know, I just want me to get out of the house. And like, this is the place I like to come to. And they would just sit on the side. Mm -hmm. But like, they were happy to do that. And we were happy mm -hmm. that that was like something that we were able to do for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, you start somewhere and we're very accepting of like whatever level you're at wherever you're ready like everyone has you know challenges so there's like there's autistic people very engaged in wanting to be social and having an outlet to be with other autistic people that get it they like that and there's some people who are like afraid of socializing or don't have those skills but they're just they just show up and it's like okay whenever you're ready you can join us and like normally yeah, um, it might take a few, a, a while, but they start, you know, engaging in their activities and engaging socially. I mean, and then we really meet, like, whoever shows up. And, um, like, there was one night we played hide and seek. <laughs> um, there was one night we just um, ate pizza and talked. There was one night we played, you know, um, board games the entire time and didn't talk about anything the board game so it just like depends on who shows up and we read the, the situation it's different with everyone that that comes well that comes back to the word that i was trying to describe of, of attunement it's like mm -hmm. reading those cues and being open to what we talk about at, at the, the beautiful capacity four stage where you're having a complex kind of interaction where you understand that there's somebody who has a whole interesting subjective life inside of them and I have mine and how can we come together and figure this out together? Mm -hmm. Like like understanding that somebody has a really good time just having a place to go, but they may not want to participate in the same way that I do. Um, when we work with people in a floor time method, we're constantly adapting and making it be what really excites them because that's when when we're really passionate and excited, that's where we have the most energy to grow. So um, we, we, we started with someone he, when he was 27 and he really wasn't sure what he wanted to do in his life, but we knew that he really loved music, listening to music, listening to the radio. So we started with just making playlists almost, and then that just grew into kind of being like a DJ and then thinking about how can I translate this into a way to make some money and who can help and just sort of going from there um, starting with passion and then making plans and so every every floor time session is different from anybody else's because who you are is different from everybody else yeah and that's similar to what um i wanted our approach to be very individualized and i wanted yeah. the person with autism to be the client yeah where I felt like so many services, especially because I was diagnosed at 16, it was really odd that I would go to these services and then they would talk to my parents about yeah. these. And I would be sitting there and they'd direct all these questions at my parents and they're like, why, even my parents were like, why aren't you asking her? She's 16, like she, <laughs> she can answer these questions. She knows more what she wants than we do and what she needs yeah. to do. And yeah. so I really wanted the autistic voice to be the most important voice in the room. 
And yeah. They said, I don't like this service. I don't want it. Then that's what we listen to. You know, they, they need a buy in um, right. for it to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're talking about hard stuff when we're facing challenges and trying to meet our goals and grow. That's hard. So it has to be with the people that you feel like you can trust and you feel good with. That you feel like they get you. And it has to be the way that feels right to you, safe and good. So I totally, totally agree with that. I, I tell my, my mentees, hey, I'm just one of the many mentors because I get requested the most because I'm online. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, hey, if this isn't working out, there's other fantastic mentors that have very different approaches than me. And you can test, you know, you can interview all of us you know and, and try it out with someone else i love that and at any point like i'm not offended that it didn't work out like you're everyone's different um so you can always let me know or if there's other people you can contact at our team just let them know you know what i want to try a different mentor because like i get it i've been in that position i'm like this person's amazing but they're not right for me and yeah um I've been there and it's so uncomfortable. Like, how do I approach this? You know, mm -hmm. but you make it easy by just yeah. bringing it up to begin with. Yeah. 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 We have to talk about those things. We have to talk about, I've been really aware this week in the past couple of weeks that we also have to talk about our differences and how comfortable are we when be able to name those differences, maybe in our perspective, our cultural background, our racial background, our, our life experience background and, and talk about how how's that how am I impacting you and how are you impacting me and can we make that open and comfortable not a taboo topic not an uncomfortable topic to to be able to name it and say hey we're different and uh, that's okay as long as it's okay to talk about it so that has to come up too who do we feel comfortable with who are we how can I understand you if I have a very different life experience and I I need to I need to learn about it. I need to listen. So that's why it's so great to have the autistic voice, as you say, the most important voice in the room. Yeah. We got this nice comment. I've not heard this before, how empowering, especially for those who have been taught that the only option was a behavioral approach. The most important voice in the room. Love that. Yeah, I love that. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Um, yeah, autism is not a behavioral problem, and it never has been. So why are we just doing behavioral programs? That doesn't make sense to me. Um, it, I mean, it affects behavior, but the root cause has nothing to do with behavior. Behavior is all communication. So focusing on what is being communicated instead of the communication itself and that it's wrong because it's not wrong. <laughs> That's right. It's, I, I so agree. It's not, it's not a behavior disorder. It's not like conduct disorder or oppositional defiant disorder or the, mm -hmm. those kind of be, behavior disorders. It's, it's a challenge of development and neuro neurology. And when, when you talk about that, we talk about communicative intent, looking at what the purpose, the purpose, the meaning, and what is someone trying to get across, even if they don't necessarily verbalize it? What are what are, what are their behaviors showing us that their purpose and their meaning and their communicative intent is, so that we can attune, connect, and and help that person to get what they want and get get what they need. So it's a very different approach. And if we start that way with families, they can calm down. They can be less frustrated all the time having this this goal in mind of um, compliance or sameness or their child fitting in they're so often very 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 worried about kids and teens having a miserable lonely life if they're different as opposed to what you're saying is no we can all accept that everybody's different every nobody has to be or do a certain way to be together and have really, really meaningful connections, mm -hmm. have a really good time together. Yeah, when you stop fighting that 
there is a difference in trying to change and all that kind of stuff and just focusing on like what's wrong and you focus on more of the positives and the passion and the excitement of the difference. Yeah. It can bring with that. There's such a difference in relationships and in positivity and in like just, you know, everything in general and that's the focus. And so like that's what we try to focus on. It doesn't mean that we never work on things that are a challenge, but no. you know, there's it, it comes up organically when it's like, well, I want to get a job and I'm really passionate about film. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, in order to get this job, you probably need to bathe and hygiene is bad. For you. <laughs> you know, like you have been work doing that. Like rather than, you know, my kid never takes a bath, so you need to make sure he's taking a bath every day. Like that doesn't work. Cause it's yeah. like, why? <laughs> I don't um, care. It's We're not more yeah. organic. You know, uh, like we're excited about doing this, but in order to do this, we have to focus on some of these not so fun things. Um, in order to get there, these are the steps. And so, like, that's been so much more helpful to me. And because um, I, I use a lot of the services that I, uh, I created, like, there's a reason I created them. And you know that there's a need for, for a couple of years. And I, like, it's just made a world of difference. Uh, for me, so I'm excited other people get to do it because it's just, it's so helpful. Yeah. Yes. So um, building off of your passions, mm -hmm. and making it meaningful in a context of meaning that fits for you uh, versus for somebody else's ideas of what's bad, what's good, how you're how you're bad, <laughs> how you're good, that kind of, yeah. um, we, we just had do, uh, Dr. Diane Cullinane who started the DIR Floor Time Coalition of California with some other folks. She was our first president. She wrote a short paper talking about avoiding the good job habit for providers, not to, or parents or anybody, anybody supporting someone with autism to, why is it, what, well, it's not bad to say good job, but what's better you know than constantly thinking that you're evaluating someone and holding them to a certain standard that you have in your mind and whether they're meeting that being curious about who is this person why are they doing what they're doing and what how can i help them it's a very very different way of being with someone than always evaluating assessing counting their behaviors and good jobbing them mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh it's just a different way to be together, which is really focusing on shared joy. Oh, yeah, that's so important is celebrating, even celebrating challenges. Like I, like, I remember before I was diagnosed, like school was really tough for me. And like the days that made it easier is when I came home and my, my dad had, I, I'm obsessed with Goofy from Disney. And I remember like he would have like a, a goofy mug mug he saw one day and he like he got it for me he's like yeah i know you've been having a tough time and so i saw this and i thought of you it's like <laughs> and like i was like oh my god that's like you know that made my day and that made it easier you know to face challenges and like or having like you know my favorite snack prepared for me when i came home from school those kind of things like celebrated you know i'm having a tough time and like it wasn't you know, um, it didn't reflect it negatively. It's like, I'm sorry you go through a tough time. Here's something that maybe makes it easier. Um, mm. So you're not constantly being manipulated by mm -hmm. a behavioral rewards and consequences approach. You're being seen. Mm -hmm. And to be seen is one of the most fundamental needs we have that we don't always talk about. Mm -hmm. We talk about in, in, in our approach, the ability to feel felt, to feel like someone feels you, to, to yeah. feel that they feel that you're, hard, you're going through a hard time, to feel that with you, that you love Goofy and that mm -hmm. cheers you up. And that then life is different when we're not totally alone and isolated and with, with that feeling that nobody sees me or nobody really understands me or gets me is torturous, it's intolerable. Yeah, it can be so lonely. Um, 
being autistic or being the parent of someone with autism and the rest of the world doesn't get it and like you don't get each other because there's such like a difference in the way we experience the world but coming together and being like I don't know completely what's going on but I see you going through a hard time it, it just makes such a difference um, so different. you don't have to know the specifics but you can see your child struggling or see your child having a great time and jumping in in that same emotion and celebrating that moment and being in that moment exactly. and, and like I know one thing that parents do is they love to look like five years in the future and be like oh but if you do this now that will happen then and like mm -hmm. in that moment <laughs> like that's important kids don't live in the future like that they're in the moment and when you're not there in the moment they know and so if you're not celebrating that moment or crying with them in that moment like they can feel that and like they want you to be there in those moments with them and that's really important and, i yeah. heartily agree or else you, yeah. the, the, the parent misses the childhood, the whole yeah. point they had a child, they're not there for it if they're only mentally thinking five years in the future and what if all the what mm -hmm. ifs uh, that yeah. being goofy and silly together now is just gonna make make you be yeah, goofy and silly. The moments I remember with my parents is when they were there with me. Um, Absolutely. They, I don't remember the moments where they prepared for all these different things. Like I don't. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember when they were with me. Yeah. So that's what we call a relationship-based approach to helping someone grow and develop. It's the understanding those shared presence moments, sharing emotions are the core, the core of what we're looking for. And that it does kind of look five years down the road, really, because if, if you're helping your loved one to learn how to share emotions, to share moments, to be present together, that's going to take them where they need to go. Mm -hmm. That's going to get them where they need to go in terms of what's a meaningful human existence. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good to hear from your perspective that that's what you remember. Yeah, I, I have memories. Like I remember um, there was, I struggled in school in middle school and I came home with grade after grade um, of like failed grades, no matter how I studied or how long I studied with my parents. And I completely remember um, the moment more so like I know my mom probably was like okay what do we do what do we do what do we do but the moment I remember where we really bonded where I really trusted her was I came home with another failed grade and I broke down crying I couldn't handle it anymore and she cried with me and said I don't know what's going on and I'm so sorry you're going through this um, I wish I knew what to do. And it was all the things I was feeling too. And hearing that and feeling that with her was so powerful. And like, I still remember wow. and yeah. I, that built connection with her rather than, oh my God, I'm going to call these people and we're going to get a tutor. And we're going to like, that didn't help me get through the, the emotion of it. It helped, maybe helped me like, you know, learn, uh, but it didn't help me like process what was happening where that crying with her and feeling that emotion with her, that's what I remember. And that's what helped really helped me to then move on from that and go, okay, I'm gonna start afresh <laughs> and I'm gonna try again. Where without yeah. that, like I was getting to the point of like, I'm giving up, school's not for me, I feel stupid, you know, where like that moment of someone else feels this and sees this and sees I'm struggling and knows I'm not stupid and know, just doesn't know what to do. Um, like that was so powerful to me. And I have a bunch of those moments where like, it's okay to, to cry with your kids. Like so many parents feel like they have to like shut their door in their bedroom and not let their kids see it. It's okay, like it's normal to cry and kids should see you cry so they know it's normal for them to cry. Yeah. Yeah, it, the, you, that's the most beautiful way I've ever heard it described in terms of why why do we focus on 
attunement. Why do we focus on shared emotion? Is that is transformative? Mm -hmm. That moved you to a whole new place of strength and kind of yeah, finding your strength, finding your willpower to go back again to um, that's that's pretty strong. I mean, to go back again to a place of constant failure and try again with a better attitude. That's resilience. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Like there's so many stories I have like that as a kid. Like I think people forget how hard it is to be a kid and right. everything's brand new and so scary and you're experiencing everything for the first time. And then being yeah. realistic, oh my God. I don't know how I did all the things I did and it went through all the pain that I went through. And I don't I don't know how I did it. Um it's insane thinking about it. Um it's kind of heroic. And it's not a heroism that we often celebrate in our culture. We, but we need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the, your stories really make our point. Yeah, I love sharing my stories because it's it's you it's a universal story that so many people have. Yeah, I didn't realize that at the time I thought I was the only one. You know, like right? was like why? Sure. You know, so that that's what we all go through when we're going through middle school and early years of high school. We think we're the only one with everything. We don't even know how to talk about it. Yeah, and so now that i'm sharing it it's like helping so many other people who are now in the same place i used to be and i'm like i'm here you can talk to me about it you can contact me i have services set up to help you in those situations i'm like i can talk to parents about it and it just i people don't have to experience the things that i experienced and i've seen like changes caught way earlier than with me and it just makes me so excited mm -hmm. that, you know Mm -hmm. The world is changing for the better. <laughs> the world is changing for the better. They're, we're looking at early, early signs that, mm -hmm. that you know, babies might need support, that there's something different mm -hmm. about the way they're developing, or even some genetic markers now, maybe um, saliva tests, which would say, okay, let's get the team on board now, help the parents adapt, attune, and really focus on relationship connection even if it may be trickier with a little one who's developing differently who may be more self-absorbed who may be um more uh, sensitive and quicker to quicker to melt down these things make it more ch challenging for very good attuned parents they need a team that's helping them look and see who is this little person and how can we get through and what do they need to be more calm, more regulated, and be able to share those emotions like you talked about, to feel connected and not alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Molly asked, says, this is exactly how I feel like now that I am alone. How do, mm -hmm. how do you suggest getting help? Well, um, it depends on what city you're in, but I, I think I'd go to that ICDL directory and look look up people who are trained to help you um, and to, uh, who know how to offer the service that you need so you're not alone, so that you have people who want to connect with you, who want to get to know you, your unique, unique challenges, your unique passions, and then make a plan from there to help you. Come to artism.com and get the, the mentoring that Chloe's talking about um, that. That's another way to do it. There's lots and lots of resources mm -hmm. that use a, a developmental, a relationship-based approach. Yeah. Definitely. All well, these support groups for literally everything. There's, you know, talk therapy. There's somatic therapy. There's meditation. There's there's so many things, you know, outside the box that like aren't always talked about. Like you, um, there's so many different ways to, to help regulate emotion and not feel alone. And yeah. um, yeah, there's ways to do it 
with other people, there's a way to do it by yourself, there's ways to do it in groups, there's ways to do it one on one. Like Yeah. So absolutely. You can email us too at Greenhouse Therapy Center. We have a contact us. So you can email us to let us know where you are located and we can help you find mm -hmm. something that's really close to you or if you want to do something more like online with Chloe. Yeah, um, um, if you have a regional center, um, there's so many services in your area that would be covered by, um, by a regional center. Um, and hopefully we get that, that new program that lets you um, just get any service you want. Um, really That's in California where we're pretty lucky to have yeah. across the lifespan support for developmental needs of uh, um, the self-determination that's yeah. coming down the pike where you can choose your own services and no one has yeah, to tell you. I love you. that. There's so many services I want that I haven't been able to get and I'm hoping yeah. that will open some doors for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there is a lot out there. Um, and so, yeah, especially if it's a need. Um, there's, and autism, if you need any of our services, we do give scholarships because we aren't vendored in, in California, we do um, try to take anyone no matter where they live. And right now everything's online, so we go through Zoom. I think that there's a lot more you can do in person, but we can't do that right now. Hopefully yeah. Soon, like, it, I would, I'm so excited to do mentorship in person, and, like to like go like do activities together that um, you know, the person's passionate about and you mm -hmm. know, just go to lunch together, go on a walk together. Like just mm -hmm. like, that kind of energy is so important. Um, I'm so excited to do that eventually. Right now I'm online. Um, so if you're not local, this is your opportunity to- It's a big opportunity yeah. for sure. Um, People in other countries can get help that might not actually be available in certain countries. We have a lot of, people being trained in the floor time approach around the world in Turkey and Brazil and China, uh, in Ireland, uh, lots and lots of, but I know there's other countries that have very little in the way. So yeah. this, this online support, I think you're onto something. I really do. Yeah, so I'm hoping we can keep um, the, most of our services online um, if we have to hire like an online staff and then the in-house staff. I don't know how that's gonna work, but that'd be really cool so that yeah. I know it's not available everywhere. So I want to keep, you know, anyone that needs it have the opportunity to use our services. So it's it's been working really well. So I hope that um that can continue to happen. Yeah. Um so checking the time we're getting down to um, the end of our hour. So if you wanted to talk about your book. <laughs> I did, I did. I want to talk about it more though, always. Um, this Floor Time Strategies, as I mentioned, has helped a lot of parents get involved in um, knowing, you know, how do I, how do I take a relationship-based approach? How do I take a play-based, passion-based approach? and use it to really get to know what's going on inside of my kid, what's going on inside of my adolescent or my early adult, um, and what's important here to, to, to really stress. Is it all this, um, you know, sort of, like you said, should I be running around making a massive program of activities and, or should I be most of all focused on those moments of connection and uh, sharing a passion, sharing a, a difficult emotion, sharing a, a, a very high moment of joy together. And how do I make those happen every day? So step by step, we want to help you. And we can um, also do consultations with families who are, are lots going on, like you said, online right now. So we're able to help families in other, other places in the world who want to take this approach and just get started. So uh, I think you I sh uh, showed you the website link uh, if you want to if you want to throw that up as a graphic um, to 
Wow. Our website, greenhousetherapycenter.com, they can look up our book and get it there if they want a signed version. Or they can get it on Amazon, the Four Tone Strategies book is there as well. Yeah, I'll take that. Let me yeah. put it in the chat so that you guys very cool. Click on that. Um click on that, ask your you know, email us, ask your questions. Um we want to we want to be there for you when you say where do I start? We want to help you get started in getting not feeling alone and um, whether you're an, a person with autism or you're supporting someone who has autism, we don't want you to feel alone or that your struggle is unknowable because it's, it's shareable and we can share it with you. There we go. Yeah. Chloe, you're the queen of doing three things, three things at once and doing it smoothly. <laughs> you are. I see you all the time doing that. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough doing all this. It was so nice being on the mighty and someone else is doing all the graphics. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah the, the, and when like the, the the application updates everything and it's all in a different spot i'm like oh god <laughs> um uh, but we would never know it because you're super smooth <laughs> you just look confident and you act confident and it works out most of the time <laughs> you when you're all the way there that's you don't let people know um that that's that's my strategy and that seems to work um <laughs> i love it love it yeah, and then afterwards, I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> then, then we can freak out after. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, I like to laugh at my mistakes, and it's taken a long time to learn how to do that. But I think that's good really for everyone to learn, you know. Oh, it's not easy. Yeah. Oh, I mean, some days I it's, it's easier to do than others. but It is, and I think that's one of those stages that we talk about in, in um, our social-emotional developmental capacities is – that gray area thinking that it's not all or nothing. I'm not, per I don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm on my way somewhere and that I can make mistakes and still be a perfectly wonderful, acceptable person um, that, that uh, it, it all is not lost when I let myself down or let somebody down, that it's just a process. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah because I'm like an online person who like, people look up to as like an influencer with autism or an advocate with yes. autism. I, yes. I do put up like um, a lot of like the great things that happen, but I try to remember also to put up like some of the bad days too, because yeah. people start looking at me like, oh my God, my kid could be like that someday and never struggle. And you know, like I struggle all the time. Yeah. And so letting people know about it, um, I found is important. And so I've, I really, done that and people really like those posts so I try to remember you know to post you know what today I couldn't get out of bed and I'm okay with that you know and like that kind of stuff um so that people know you know everyone has bad days and you know um it's so easy to get caught up especially on social media like oh my god all these people are doing all these amazing things well they're only because posting those things they're not posting the other days <laughs> so right it's just there's nothing to post on our bad bad moments and we all yeah. have them i sure have them and i appreciate your humility and honesty about that because man it can look like everybody else in the world is has it all together mm -hmm. and doesn't struggle and that's just so not true and not fair to ourselves to, to compare ourselves with something that doesn't even exist so yeah we need to be honest about our struggles definitely certainly i uh, love the instagram stories because i can put stuff up like this is what i'm feeling today um and that you know and so people see if they want to see like the immediate of what i'm doing that day and then i have like bigger posts like on facebook and stuff where i talk about you know over time my challenges and what you know in hindsight how it affected me and how I got through it and that kind of stuff. And so, like, there's different people that follow me on different social media. So, like, both are available if you want to check that out. Um, and then Thanks. I also, you know, have autism and Starlight Talks where I talk about, you know, specifically autism and you know, services and that kind of stuff. 
Um, so I have like all this <laughs> information that I like. I'm just like I'm sharing my life so that hopefully other people can take it and learn from it. That's my goal. That's why I'm putting all this information out there. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. There just needs to be more stories about autism. So um, hopefully mine helps <laughs> someone. I think it's helping tremendously and your passion about helping is just, it's uh, contagious in a good way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely, like, I love getting, like, um, people come on and comment about, you know, oh my God, this helped me with my kid today. Or, oh my God, I didn't, I wasn't able to put that into words until you wrote that. And now I can share that I feel that same way. So that's really cool that that's happening. And I love your personal stories like that. It helps me just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, and, and yeah, the p regular people who follow me, like, I see you and I see what's going on. And it's so exciting um, that, that you guys you know, or putting in the effort to learn about yourself or learn about your kids. Like not everyone does that. And just starting there is like, that's amazing. <laughs> um, that's a really, like I want to validate that that's important. Um, we're so over time right now. So I've got to start wrapping yeah. up. Um, yeah. yeah. If you have any like, final parting words or message that everyone should hear, um, Andrew, if you want to share that with everybody, a final message? <laughs> uh, I just, well, I want to remind people to check in and come on out for the fundraiser on August 2nd, where it will be fun to be together, hear from our celebrities' voices, and hear from parents, hear from people who've uh, been clients and tell, telling their story, talking about their passions, and uh, having some auctions together. So, August 2nd. 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern so that we can raise some money to get the word out that there isn't just one way to help people and that insurance needs to yeah. fund that and so the laws have to change. So that's my, um, those are my parting words and to remember that um, being alone is just not okay. That sharing together our, our highs and our lows, our big moments, our hard moments um, and our great moments are what make us really uh, here for a purpose of being human. So that's that's really what I want to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, so thank you. yeah, check out um, greenhousetherapycenter.com for all of that great stuff that she talked about. Thank you. Uh, check out artism.com for everything that artism has to provide. Um, I was on the Mighty, so if you want to check that out, I, I can hear more about parenting. Um, yeah. We talked about earlier today. That's available um, on the Mighty Facebook.com, also on their YouTube channel, and I've shared it on my personal channel, and I believe it's also shared on the Artism page. So check that out if you haven't. Check out um, and come back next. Um, uh, Danny Rady from Ask for Your Experts is going to be here. Fantastic. Yeah, we always have a time chatting. So, yeah, <laughs> next week I do these live streams every Wednesday at 7 Pacific Standard Time called Starlight Talks. Um, and we talk about anything and everything related to autism. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching, everybody. Stay Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.